father. Look at it. When you look at the King James, it's like, don't touch me. And that's what we have even brought to church. We see that when women touch these people, some anointing goes. We feel women, they, they are spoilers. No, that the, the best thing that ever happened since the day spring. Am I communicating? Jesus was being heard by a woman upon resurrection. Jesus said, don't cling to me. Because she was clinging to Jesus. Come on. You know, i would never forget, I pastored a church some years ago, between 2000 and 2003. And then a sister didn't come to church. And Victor asked, why didn't you come to church? He said, because I was in my cycle. He said, people still brought Old Testament into New Testament. That they couldn't go into the temple. By what Jesus has done, everybody is sanctified forever. He that sanctified, and they that are sanctified, they are one. Am I communicating? Now he said, cling, don't cling to me, Jesus said. For I haven't yet ascended to the Father. But go, find my brothers. Something has happened. I am not their brother. I tell them that I'm ascending to to my father and your father. On the cross he was saying, my father, my father. But now, it's our father. Come on, am I communicating? It has become your father. Our identity became from the womb of resurrection. He said, yes, now we are brothers. We are one and the same. He has become a father to me and a father to you. You are my brothers. Go tell them. I say to my father, I say to my God, and to your God, and to your father. Hallelujah. Squeeze your neighbor's hand and say, I know what pastor is talking about. So the resurrection joined us together. Whatever we, whatever, or whether we are, whether we are Jews or Gentiles, the resurrection has brought us together. Can I speak? Say that again. Whether we are Jews or Gentiles, the resurrection has brought us together. We are now one. We have a f- the same father. We are from the same womb. From the womb of resurrection. Hallelujah. Ephesians and chapter 2. Reading from verse 11 to verse 19. Ephesians 2. You know, we don't have reading culture again. Both in our individual lives. So when we come to church, we'll be doing a lot of reading. From verse 11. So we'll help you cultivate that reading culture. Can we read? Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who were called on circumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hand. You know what they say? These, before now, you were regarded as Gentile. That at that time, next verse, quickly, verse 13. 13. Let's quickly rush through. I have quite a number of things we could do. But now, everybody say, but now. now. Something has changed. In Christ, ye who sometimes were far off and made nigh by the blood of Christ. Next verse. (laughs) For he is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle world partition between us. Next verse. Having abolished in the in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandment contained in the ordinances, for to make in himself of twine one new man, so make him peace. Oh, quickly, we get into verse 19. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by what? Having slain the enmity thereby. <laughs> And came and preached peace to you, which were afar off, and to them that we are nigh. Oh, oh, for through him we both have access. You didn't hear me. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. He's our Father, whether Jews, Gentiles, because of what Christ has done. Verse 19. Everybody read with me. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. I told you, this is a better place to say amen. amen. Help me tap your neighbor and say, you are no more strangers. You are no more strangers. 
And so, you know, what really got us into our identity, we started by teaching on what Paul taught. All the letters of Paul, the things that Paul emphasized in him, through him, by him, with him. He took time. And then we got into our identity because Paul took time to emphasize this. And so Paul took the time to emphasize this in all his epistles. Among other things that Paul emphasized was Christ-centeredness. It means that our heart must be fixed on him. Our gaze must be on Christ. So Paul emphasizing Christ-centeredness. And what does that mean? Jesus plus nothing. What did I say? Jesus plus nothing. It means I am in Christ. I don't need something else to make me more complete in Christ. The opposite of Jesus plus nothing is simply if and then. And if and then we find in Deuteronomy chapter 1. If you read Deuteronomy chapter 28, read it from verse 1. Let me quickly read it because it will make you laugh. Because all the ifs were fulfilled in Christ. Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 4. Maybe I will stop somewhere. And if, and it shall come to pass. If thou shalt, take note of the word, if thou shalt, hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I commanded this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Verse 2, look at it. And all these blessings, the blessings were conditional. But with what Christ has done, the blessing, there is no plus to it. In Christ we are blessed. Oh, you didn't hear me. Tap your neighbor and say, in Christ, I am blessed. In Christ, I am blessed. So the other side of the gospel emphasizes the if and then. But Paul talked about Christ-centeredness, which means Jesus plus nothing. There is no more requirement of you to enjoy the blessing of God because in Christ you are blessed. That is why he said in Ephesians 1, 3, Blessed be God, who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. He said, we were accepted in the beloved. We were chosen from the foundation of the world. We have redemption in him. We have the seal of the Holy Spirit. And then, he has abandoned to us in our wisdom and prudence. All of these are the blessings. Squeeze your neighbor's hand. Say the ifs and the then have been fulfilled in Christ. And it is wrong for you to carry the Old Testament and bring it to the New Testament. Jesus said, no man can take new wine and put it in, in an old wine skin. He said it will burst. And this is what we practice in church. And that has brought low self-esteem to people. It has made people to be confused about the reality of their identity. We try to... for the new. Reading from verse 1. Everybody look up. Acts 15. Acts 15. Look at it. And certain men which came down from where? Judea. Taught the brethren and said, and said you be what? According after the manner of Moses. You cannot be saved. That certificate, salvation is predicated under the combination of the old and new. What the church is faced with today didn't begin today. It has been there. Hello, am I communicating? Can we continue? When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them. You know what is called dissension, disagreement and argument. 
they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem where the apostles were unto the apostles and Edda about this, about the, this question. Come on, give me lighter English of verse 2. And we will get to 5. I want you to be calm. We are in Bible class. This is the problem. Paul and Barnabas were up on their feet at once in fierce protest. The church decided to resolve the matter by sending Paul and Barnabas and a few others to put it before the apostles and leaders in Jerusalem. Give me an LT because I'm looking for the word contention and disputation. Look at it. I love this. If we can't get it here, then Amplified will give it to us. Paul and Barnabas disagreed with them. We need, sorry, they disagreed with them, arguing vehemently. What if they didn't have an understanding of what Christ has done? They would have taken everything, hook, line, and sinker, fisherman, and the boat, swallowed together. So Paul and Barnabas, they stood their ground. Hello. And that is what must happen in our generation. We must stand our ground and make people understand what Christ has already done. Oh, come on, church. Am I communicating? Look at it. <laughs> they said, Paul and Barnabas disagree with them, arguing vehemently. Finally, the church decided to send Paul and Barnabas to Jerusalem, accompanied by some local believers, to talk to the apostles and elders about this question. The, what was the question? You must be circumcised for you to be saved. Never you forget the question. The question you must keep in view is that for you to be saved, you must be circumcised. And circumcision was after the Jewish order. Am I communicating the law of Moses? Am I communicating? But in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision or circumcision avail nothing. A new man. Am I communicating? Next verse. I hope you are enjoying yourself now. That's why we're in church. Don't let anybody bamboozle you. Would you read with me? I'm being brought on their way by the church. It means the church paid their way. The church sponsored their journey. Some of you don't want to sponsor my journey when I'm going to preach. Being brought... Hallelujah. Alright, that's by the way, but it's the truth. Give me lighter English. Let's deal with that. Say, Pastor, you are going to preach. Go. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with me. You need to send me. Praise God. Alright, let's read this this and so being fitted out and sent on their way by the church so the church was responsible they went through both phoenicia and samaria telling of the conversion of the gentiles what was their testimony the gentiles are being converted but as far as these people were concerned it's only for the jewish people Ooh, that's the hidden and they caused great rejoicing among all the brethren. So what gave excitement to the people? The Gentiles were being converted. Brother Geoffrey, are you see here? Verse 4. For salvation for everybody. Jews or Gentiles. To all men. Hallelujah. Are you blessed tonight? Let's read. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders and they declared all things that God had done with them. They gave testimony. The Jews and the Gent I mean, the Gentiles, they are saved. Those were the things God did, not the car they bought. You know, Pastor Barry kept talking evangelism. Evangelism. What they testified was not the house they built. It's what God has done. Everybody read verse number 5 with me. But there rose up certain of the set of fire which Billy saying that it was to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law there were some people it must be done this way we no not agree are, are you seeing it we see experiencing in the church today it must be done this way otherwise I will resign otherwise this thing will not happen in this church and what was the contention the law of Moses. And to today, the law of Moses is a major contention in the body of Christ. And sometimes, it's like we are forgotten what has been written in scripture for us. Hallelujah. We need to know. Where did I quote? Acts 15. We've read verse 5. 
I, I need to skip. Okay, should I be fast and just so I don't skip? I want you to read verse 10. I want you to read verse 10. So should you just take verse 6? Maybe 7 will skip to 10 or we'll read straight to 10. Is that okay? Which one do you want? We can skip to verse 10. Okay, verse 6. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of what? And we are still considering the matter to today. <laughs> and when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a great while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. Who was he referring to? Colinus. He was a Gentile. And God, which do I the heart, bear them, giving them, not only the Jew, even as did unto us. Verse 9. And put no difference between us and them. Purifying their heart. This is what I love. Everybody read with me. One to go. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the dis Hold it. Every time you emphasize Moses, you are putting a yoke on the neck of people. What was the question? What was the argument? It was about the law of Moses and circumcision. Is that okay? Paul, Peter asked, now therefore, why tempt you God? Each time you are trying people, you are trying to make people practice the old in the New Testament, you are tempting God. You may answer Reverend Dr. Professor Archbishop, forget it. Your title is not superior to the word of God. Did you hear what I just said? Look at what the Bible says. Now therefore, why tempt you God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples? Help me read the next phrase. Even the Moses that gave it to the people, were they able to bear it? <laughs> 613 laws. They couldn't. Give me a lighter rendering of verse 10. Give me two, three rendering as we jump off from there and talk about two more things and we will draw the curtain for today. So far, so good. Is somebody blessed? Hallelujah. All right. Everybody look up. Anything. So why are you now challenging God by burdening the Gentile believers with a yoke that neither we nor our ancestors were able to be? And that's what we do today. And that's why our identity must be in Christ, not in Moses. Otherwise, an attempt to want to live by the boat, then you, you are, you are, it's a burden. I like message. I like message rendering. Everybody look up. Want to go. So, why are you now trying to add, add God, God? Loading these new believers down with rules that crushed our ancestors and crushed us too. What they couldn't keep, they are giving to others to keep. They want to add God, God. Give me the last rendering of this verse and then we'll draw the curtain for that point. Christ-centeredness. So my eternal, my eternal security is based on what Jesus did plus nothing. Amen. Can you write that down? My eternal security is based on what Jesus Christ has done plus nothing. My eternal security is based on what Jesus has done plus nothing. Because if I start adding something to it, I'll be tempted to go back to Moses. And what I'm saying is that what Christ has done is not sufficient. And this is why identity is so important. He said, now then, amplify it. Why do you try to test God by putting a yoke on the necks of the disciples? Such as neither our forefathers nor we ourselves were able to endure. So the law was for people to endure. Thank God for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. We have the liberty. Stand fast in the liberty where with Christ has made you free. And not be entangled again with a yoke. Of bondage number two his gospel puts the pressure on jesus and not on us paul's gospel puts the pressure on jesus not on you any gospel that puts the pressure on you 
is not the gospel of Christ. And that's why we say it is Christ plus nothing. Any gospel that puts the pressure on you, you must do this. You have to do this. If God must walk in your life, you have to do this for God to walk in your life. And the pressure is on you. Every now and then, you always feel you've not been able to do something to win God's approval. I want you to know, it's another gospel you have just started walking in. And it's a test on your identity. Can I hear an amen from somebody? Amen. So our dependence, therefore, must be on, on Christ. Otherwise, sorry, it must be on Christ, which in turn produces effort, effortless change. So if we must depend, our dependence must be on Christ, and this is what produces effortless change. I don't need to struggle to work it out. I just take my identity. My identity works everything out. And my identity is Christ because Christ is my life. Tap your neighbor and say, Christ is my life. And finally, is the fact that we will need to read Philippians 3 verse 11. So we should stop taking credit for our spiritual life. People take credit for, our, for their spiritual life. Pastor Barry, as I was looking for that job, I fasted 21 days. I, as if that was not enough. I added it with seven nights of midnight prayer. All of our adventures, we want to take credit for it. It shows that we have not prized the work of Christ above our efforts. Am I communicating? It's an identity crisis. Can I hear an amen? amen. Philippians and chapter number 3, reading from verse 7 to 11. Paul had a reason to boast. From verse 7, please. But instead of boasting, he said, but what things were gained to me? Those I counted lost. For what? All the things that were gained. I dropped myself and I embraced what he has for me. Stop taking credit for your spiritual life, for your spiritual adventure. You see? And do you know, I've seen believers who just love what Christ has done for them. They live in the reality of it and things are just moving smoothly for them. Why that there are some? They say, what? Well, I don't smoke. I don't drink. I don't womanize. I don't do like other people. I don't know why things are not working for you. You are a Pharisee. Because only the Pharisee went into the temple. And simply said, Lord, you know I'm not like this publican. But that publican simply came. Said, Lord, you know I'm not worthy. So before anything, I know who I am. But the other man said, I fast three times a day. I pay my tithes. I give arms to the poor. As a matter of fact, the microphone the pastor is using, I was the one that bought it. The pastor is online now, streaming life. It's me. Oh God, if for nothing, prove yourself. God proved himself by giving you Jesus. He doesn't need to prove himself beyond that. Did you hear what I just said? Help me tap your neighbor and say, stop telling God to prove himself. He did it in Christ Jesus. Who is the first to say Amen. Yet doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ. I dropped everything because my dependence must be on Christ, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dumb that I may win Christ. Every attention shifted that I may win Christ and being found in Him, not having my own. There are those who boast of their own righteousness. Paul said, no. I stopped taking credit for my spiritual exploit. I start seeing him. Which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ. The righteousness which is of God. By him, not him, that I may know him. And the power of his resurrection. And the fellowship of his sufferings. Being made conformable unto his death next verse if by enemies i might attain unto the resurrection of the dead church i'd like to submit to you today the reason a lot of people today are confused and the christian journey is a burden on them is because of identity crisis they feel they can win god they don't see the work of Christ as sufficient enough for them. Everything declared by Christ of them, 
They find it too difficult to accept. And can I say something? It's pride not to accept what has been purchased for you. Christ has purchased these things for you. And it is pride not to accept what he has done for you. If he says you are holy, if he says he has presented you to be, uh, um, uh, to be blameless, if he says that you are without spot or wrinkle, why not accept him? Look beyond your condition. Your condition will align with what he has purchased for you. Am I communicating? It is pride not to accept what he has done. And that has become the bane of the faith today. Identity crisis has kept people where they are. Today they rise, tomorrow they fall. Today they are up, tomorrow they are down. It's an upward and downward movement. It has become a trend. And today they are confused. Tomorrow they think, will I make it? Some still say, excuse me, if I am angry now, Christ come, I will not go to heaven. Your going to heaven is not predicated on what you do. It is predicated on what he has done. Jesus said, where I am, you will be. For the father you are you are believed in him you are in him already he has become your life your mistake notwithstanding what he has done has completed everything for you he, nothing is required of you there are no requirements there are no addictive to what christ has done and that is why we must emphasize christ plus nothing when it becomes christ plus what i can do then we have not submitted ourselves to what christ has done and then we have identity crisis Friends, he called you brothers. He called you his therefore. He calls you the one that came from the same womb, from the same womb of resurrection. If the resurrection is the reason for our faith, then I want you to understand, resurrection has completed the work for you. Your, the work of Christ in you cannot be completed by you. It was completed in resurrection. You are walking in a completed thing. No wonder he said in Colossians 2 verse 10, he said you are completing him. Your completion is not based on what you do. It is based on what he has done. Let's rest our faith in what he has done. Let's trust the work of Christ. Let's see the work of Christ as authentic enough. Let's see his work as strong enough to deliver on what he has spoken about. Like Peter will say, let's not put other yoke on men. What our fathers could not bear. Let's not put it on people. Stop trying to marry the old with the doom. Accept who you are in Christ and enjoy an effortless change in your Christian adventure. Thank you, Father. Lift those hands and let's appreciate him tonight. We we'll bless your name. We we'll thank you. Thank you for the work you have done. Thank you for the work of redemption. Thank you for the work of salvation. My identity is not in doubt. I know in whom I have believed. I know in whom I have believed and I'm persuaded. Thank you, Father. Be Gabonda Brahasa. Oh, Jamalaha. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Gabalaha. Thank you, Father. We give you glory in Jesus' name. I just remember this old song and I want us, can you be on your feet? Let's do this song. It's done by whether the brothers of the cross answer. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. It sounds funny. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for saving me. I want you to ask you. Come on. Why are you folding your hand? Thank you for saving me. Come on. Clap your hand. Thank you. Hallelujah, thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Hallelujah, thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Hallelujah, thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you for saving me. Two more times. Hallelujah, thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. For the last time, thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Where those hands are giving thanks for saving you. Hallelujah. Thank you for saving me, my Lord. 
as little as it seems, salvation is the greatest gift on earth. Hallelujah. On Sunday, promises to be wonderful. We're introducing a new topic. We are done with five.